Yeah, welcome to the bigger picture, <clears throat> episode three, gentlemen. We're back. We made it to three, three <laughs> episodes. Two for for the people watching. If you notice anything similar in the fits, we did shoot two episodes in one day, <laughs> but we were dedicated to making sure we got full something. transparency. That's uh, right. We believe I'm Elliot Wilson, Jeremy Hecht, DJ Head, West Coast. It's gonna be a great episode because do it. We so. We have some some bigger picture conversations we got to talk about. Okay. But I do want to bring it back to one of the comments we got from episode one because there was a lot of people upset at both Elliot and I, not as much at you, for a very specific thing we said about Common and Drake. Ah. So this person said, this is Elite Black Sash. They said, that narrative around Common is crazy. Stay scheming versus sweet, bruh. Common did his thing and then starred in a bunch of movies and TV series. Ain't nobody run Common out of rapping. LOL. He was already in his 20th year professionally. He battled Drake for fun. LOL. So we basically both said that Drake ran Common out of competitive rapping. We said it a little bit jokingly, yeah. but... Looking back at that battle, how do we feel about Stay Sweet, Scheming? Well, Sweet is Sweet. underrated. I love Sweet. Sweet was an underrated. It was. Record. He was talking crazy at the boy at the end of that joint. I was like, insane. Wow. I didn't even know. I didn't before we even knew about Serena and what the issue was. We I didn't even know what the fuck was going on. But yeah, I still stand by that. Like, yo, he he stopped he, every album since then. He's not approached on some little competitive type thing. I am excited that he's cooking up with Pete Rock, so yeah. I'm looking forward to that, man. You know, Com I used to live near Common. We used to have an uh, apartment building in Brooklyn. Not my Brooklyn apartment, not Kendrick. My Brooklyn apartment. Yeah, yeah. Live in the same building as Common. So Common's the homie, man. I didn't mean it to sound so harsh and mean, <laughs> but... Why do you think you people know? play with Common? Like, he ain't like he ain't one of them ones. Like, what? what why do you That's think Common does it? That's why the bitch in you. That the bitch in you is the classic. He brought it to Cube. Like nobody else ever. But I'm did. saying I don't think Common is mentioned in those conversations. When you have those, yeah, like you might have a purist or an elitist conversation, and he's mentioned, like you know Yasin Bay. Yeah, like yeah, all yeah, that. yeah, yeah. But he's never like mentioned in those kind. Is it because of his volume of music or because it's? It's because uh, what did uh, he light skin? No, what did <laughs> what, what Drake it's said? Because he's light skin. It's what Drake said to push uh, on Duppy Freestyle. He said, "You an approachable dude." I, th I think Common is just so nice and well respected, guy, yeah. and like in movies and doing poetry, and like just a really genuine guy. He seems, he seems like, like a really cool dude, really cool guy. Like I would, dude. yeah. So there's no, dude. there's nothing threatening. He's non-threatening. You feel like I don't believe it necessarily. Even uh, during Sweet, not that I believe Drake in some of his like harder moments. Pause, but I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like Common. When I was hearing Sweet, I'm like, you're the guy who's calling this guy Sweet. Like I just did. Again, I didn't grow up uh, uh, hearing Common in the disses, but. It, to me, he just seems very, yeah, like, cool guy. I like, also, I like, it's underrated how, like, he's really has built this whole second act of, like, really, yeah. like his, his, what, IMDB is fucking insane. Hey, bro, these different you shows know what? I think you know who's on his ass? Uh-oh. Method Man. Oh, Method, yeah, Method. I, I think Method believe. Man's, I think his acting career is going to probably trump his, his, his rap career. That's which, insane, too. Whoa. I'm just saying, bro, he's really good at it. Yeah. He's really yeah. good at dedicated it. Dedicated to it. Because the thing is, like, okay, it's two actors. The reason why I brought this up, it was two actors, right? Well, mm -hmm. rappers turn act well, three if you count Will Smith, right? Yep. He would be goaded in that in yeah, that sense, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But the two that I'm thinking of would be Common, because we're talking about Common and LL Cool J. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who don't even know LL as a rapper. Yeah. Right? So I'm just looking at it from the set from the lens of if if he stays on the, if Method Man stays on this traje trajectory, mm -hmm. I I could see the same thing happening for and LL is like one of the forefathers of of a rap, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, like, don't get but it fucked up. Was it NCIS was like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That but but you like understand what I'm saying? Though. Yeah. Like LL Cool J is literally one of the first people to take rap global. Yes. And he's the first rap superstar to be solo star in hip hop. To be fair, yeah. so that's what I, that's what I mean when I say that. Yeah. What about where do we put Cube in that conversation? Is he Cube? The, the reason why I don't put so Cube to me. I would put him in a different in a different category. I don't because LL Common, well Will Smith does it too, but I don't see Q doing what Will Smith does, and I don't see Common and LL doing what Q does. Like Q produces his movies. Yeah, you think of yeah. Q like also he's, behind he's the literally scenes. Yeah, writing yeah, the yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's a mogul. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. him and DJ Pooh, they actually write their movies themselves, and then they might play a role in the movie or lead whatever. But I think that's the the focal point is not on I'm gonna be a superstar or being an actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Dre as a producer versus Dre. As yeah, a like he has yeah, albums, yeah, yeah. but yeah. we know him as being the goat of this. 
Well, speaking of the best out, right now, we had a very controversial take from our own Elliot Wilson. Okay. Uh, this has become a weekly occurrence. <laughs> <laughs> but, Causing a disturbance? Yeah, this is a new segment, controversial take oh. of the week. You said Gunna is a top five MC in, in the, the game, game right now. Right now. So I used MC. I, I like how you put right now to cover your ass. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> no, he, he also said that he's top five all time. You, you said, you, no, wait, I you didn't know he did. <laughs> 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 no, but I think that I don't know why people don't give. Gun- it's weird because I feel like obviously Gunner's in the controversy and this, and obviously people saying talking bad on him and saying the S word and all that type of stuff. And now like the bandwagon is going the other way, where I feel like people are giving him his respect, but I still think he's not mentioned like in that artist conversation that he could be potentially one of the new leaders. Like he's that consistent with his work ethic. Like that last album, I like even more than the new album. Um, Basically told his story, you know, whether you like it or not, and his, everything was laid out on the table, and I, that would, that didn't even get nominated for a Grammy. So I feel like in some ways he's very underrated right now. Like even though the, the work is there, the work ethic's there, the music's great, and he has his own sound, and I just think I want him to have the conversation. I use the MC word, yeah, to be that, triggering yeah. because you know to be think, triggering to be triggering because you know we grew up the MTV hottest MCs that was the standard. Um, obviously, to me nowadays. People are just artists to me. They're not like, you have to be Mr. Lyrical Miracle. So, I, so I'm saying like he's a top hip-hop artist actively in the top five. So it's not you necessarily, mentioned. you know, lyrical or the bars the aren't the Yo, number man, one thing. The artist. He's making great music. This guy, yeah. and he's got his own sound. I'm talking about the quality of the content, the music, the music itself. Like, we need, we need to start mentioning him a little bit more in these conversations. I'm going to be honest with you, Jay. I slept on Gunner. When did you wake up? Maybe like an album or two ago. Post snitch. Um, easy, easy, Jerry. Easy. Post no, alleged. No, no, no. I, I, okay, look, I slept on Gunner because I would always just put him in the in the thug bag, like oh, yeah. it's another offspring, uh, another thug offspring, right? To be fair, like his sound is similar. He does does he does have yes. his own thing, and um. But to me, he just never did it as well as other people who I like had a similar yeah. sound. Like for, for to be to be perfectly honest, I don't think anyone does the auto tune better than Dirk. That's my own personal opinion, mm-hmm. because Dirk, the way he EQs his voice, you can still hear his voice. That's right, true. Just right. You hear the pain. You hear it right through the right through the auto tune, and everybody else using it, they either high or it's low, or you know they find their range, whatever. Yeah. Right. So to me, Gun has always been in between Thug and Dirk. Like, yeah. Dirk is here, Thug is here. I know that's going to be controversial, but that's just my, my, my take yeah. on it. Like, uh, Dirk is here, Thug is here when it comes to that, that sound, and then Gunner's, like, right in the middle. So it's never been exceptionally good, but never, never been bad. Yeah, it's, yeah, just, yeah. it's just indifference. But I think the difference between Gunner is that I agree with what you're saying. I also think the difference is, to me, it's like he's almost, to me, like a more focused uh, Thug, like, in terms of how he approaches things. I feel like Thug, obviously, has made a lot of great music, but besides what the um, – <clears throat> What was the one the, the, with the green cover? Uh, just a little fun. Just have a little fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that album is his most focused album to me. But when you hear Gunner, his bodies of work, like the, the, the sequencing of his albums is very unique. And like to me, Dirk hasn't to me delivered that type of record yet. Or even Thug. I can see like, that. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, what do you, I mean, here's the thing. And I want to discount what you're saying. But if you look at a song like All My Life, right? To me, that's what? Dirk and, um, Cole. and Cole, Cole, right? Mm-hmm. I, people didn't expect that from Dirk. Yeah. Because Dirk is Dirk has never really been Chicago drill like all the way like mm-hmm. everybody else would be, you know what I mean? Um but he's never been all the way like Atlanta sounding. It's kind of like he had his own pocket in which he lives, right? Yeah. Musically and 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 his subject matter is different because he from Chicago, it's a different world. Mm-hmm. Right? But when you think about a song like All My Life, I think Gunna needs one of those. Yeah. We need something that I need. I need more from you at this point. I know you can make. I know you. I know you can do a, a, a song like Ski, and and live in that world and, mean. and and fuck you mean and stuff like that. Like I he know you have can, the record that defines him. I want to know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I want to know why. The closest. The closest he had, and I. I don't necessarily think it's that because it wasn't like a hit like that. But it made me a believer in Gunna was Bread and Butter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which yeah, he came yeah. up with right after all the allegations. Absolutely. Everyone's like, how is he gonna put this into the music? How is he? And he came out and actually told a story to the point where I, I heard what he was saying. Yep. The bars were there. The metaphors were there. I was like, okay, 
I was sleeping on Gun a little bit. Fact. So if that was maybe a more mainstream sounding song, it could have been like an All My Life, but I think he had to address that situation. Yeah. But the potential is there. I think he could have one of those. I think he has potential. I'm we, not, I don't want to discount his potential. And let's go back to, the, obviously, the, the elephant in the room, the whole snitching thing. Like, Why, why do you feel like people, to me, have now... Don't Flopped. push that narrative anymore. It's not like the music though, was good enough. Even though Future and Metro have this, or we don't hang with rats, new type shit, whatever. Like, I still feel like there's no there's no country for that anymore. I feel like everybody's just saying, "Oh, this guy's good," and you know, it's sad that Doug's still on trial. To me, it was always unique that he's still signed to YSL, right? Which we never seen. Usually, if somebody breaks up, you know, hip hop history, it's like you ain't gonna still be on the label. So, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, is Doug? Why do you think that Doug? He's never said anything publicly about whatever their relationship is at this point. He has just let it ride. It's it, Well, it's interesting because people around Thug have said different things, right? It was like Thug's dad, I think, came out and said that Gun is always going to be his guy, that, yeah. you know, they're cool. But I think it was Thug's sister, if I'm not mistaken, said something that might have been contradictory. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know if... <clears throat> That's the toughest part. I think fans are more confused than anything, and they like the music, and they'd rather just ride until something is said otherwise. They'd yeah. rather ride with it. If Now, if Thug came out and said, do not listen to Gunna, like, we do not fuck with each other, he turned his back on me, we had a deal, he did not hold his end, I think there might be more of There'll that be conversation. And, yeah. and to be honest, like, and this is, I don't have, I don't have any insight. Yeah, any, we don't know the street politics. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know what's going on internally. From the optics, from my standpoint, I think it's more to it than what everybody thinks. Yeah. Mm. Because if you think about it, right, you my mans, you, you, I don't know if it was part of the plan, not part of the plan, whatever, the, the speculations are crazy, right? But you doing what you did, th- my homies said that he told. That's what my homies are saying, mm-hmm. right? The homies that I know that are community leaders mm-hmm. <laughs> said, <laughs> said that. The yeah, activists. True gentlemen. The, yeah, community activists. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, they said that Gunner told, right? Mm-hmm. So based on that alone, he's excommunicated, okay? I think by now we would have heard something from somewhere. Like, yeah. you got to think with all the, 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 the trials are, is, a, is a whole circus. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Oh, boy, like playing the, the lyrics. It's a whole circus, okay? Yeah. The, the, the dude sneaking the, the, the paraphernalia in, like the dude <laughs> having amnesia. It's on, almost on unbelievable. The, it's, it's unreal, yeah. okay? By now, there would have been some sort of leak saying Thug is like, fuck him, or that's my brother, yeah. right? The fact that it's, it's silence, yeah. to me, let's, that, to me, based on what I know about how these things work when it comes to close-knit groups in, in a circumstance like this, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, there's stuff we don't know, and there's stuff we're never going to know, yeah. right? Yeah. And, I, and to either where it's too, it's too uh, uh, fragile for it, for it to ever leak, or it's really... Let me get out of here and not tell you how, how I feel. And in the meantime, business is business, which yeah. was the tagline, which was the the, yeah. al- the album. And yeah, because yeah, he didn't defend him either. I mean, Gunner yeah. had to get all the heat on him. Like when he first came out, like you said, he faced it with the music. It's like so Doug didn't protect him. Like no. in terms of like don't be dissing my little homie. But like you know, and also I look at it like to me, I don't know. I don't know for sure, but I would speculate and say Gunner seems like he was <laughs> you know. The, the kid, the guy that joined him is an artist, per se. Not on some kind of street shit, Facts. not on some whatever type of situation. Where now you're part of this bigger organization that you have some street shit going on. But this, this kid's the music. He's, he's, the, he's the young prince. He's like, he's my protege. He's my musical protege. So let him go out there and make his music. You know? but, like, but you also have to remember, like, we're still in the music business. 100%. So, and Bill's legal fees got to be insurmountable. That's what I'm saying. Point. So, it's like, him out as the hey, bro, look, yeah. go out there and we need you on the road. Because exactly. Gunner came out selling out arenas. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Facts. He had an amazing show. I saw that show he did at the Barclays. That was an amazing show. Like, I was know, looking at that footage and I'm like, I, to be honest, this because this is when we didn't know what was going on. That changed it. And I'm like, yo, he's selling out arenas. Like, Also, he's also he's not rapping over the, the, the vocals. No, he hits oh, his really? vocals. He doesn't have He hits his vocals. vocals. Yeah. Straight up. That's a star. Well, Best MC. I'm well, I, just, you, I want him in that top five conversation who, this year. Top five like, conversation. Who, 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 who else? Before? Yeah, who else is a, in the five? <laughs> well, Kendrick's probably number one, one right now. Yeah. West Coast. Uh, I say Future is two. Drake maybe is third. Uh, Gunna. Who else came out this year? Uh, yeah, that, Gunna's definitely in the five to me. Q, yeah. maybe? Huh? School by Q. Q, boy, Q could make the argument that Q's in there. Rhapsody maybe right now, five. Rhapsody just dropped her album, so it might be a little too premature to me put her in that conversation. But, yeah, I think that 
Yeah, he, he, I just I'm so impressed. You want him with in the combo? His body of work. Yeah, like these, like again, I like the, the the like you said, bread and butter. That was amazing. That last album, he really told his story, his testimony, and faced all the challenges. And now this new album has just got this fly, unique sound, and just like you know, I really like the way he conducts himself. And shout out to um, Ebony, like his manager and stuff. She's a solid person too. And it's just like I just like the way they're just like keeping it clean. And just get into the work. You know? And he hasn't, has he even done an interview? I haven't heard him speak. I haven't heard him he, speak. He's him. really yeah. done it in a unique way where he just did it with music. Yeah. Which absolutely. is crazy. But we're talking about auto tune. I, I think you had an interesting point about all the different levels of how people use it. But there was a tweet, uh, I know you responded to it, but I think it was Carl Cherry who tweeted something about how <laughs> when rappers get further along in their career. Usually we expect them to grow lyrically or mature in their sound, but Future has kind of maintained the same topics in his lyrics for years and somehow he's gotten bigger. He said, we're supposed to get sick of rappers who talk about the same things over and over. The audience fatigue usually coincides with a drop in relevance. Future's been talking about the same things for a decade. The music still sounds fly and he's as big as ever. Why, why do you think Future has been able to do that and other people get criticized? I think you just keep continuously turn over your topsoil. We turn over your what? That was a, a gardening reference. But. <laughs> Last time it was fishing, this time it's gardening. I'm yeah. learning, I'm learning. I mean, if you continue, continuously like mulch the, the, the soil, like you can just grow new stuff. I don't think Future is caring about e evolving with his fan base. Just like, um, I think Joe Budden brought that up before, like how Future and Drake kind of like stay in this level of mm -hmm. maturity. maturity where they never evolve beyond high school or they never evolve beyond freshman year of college. <laughs> it's more just like... I don't want to grow up. I'm a drug yeah, dealer. Yeah, I don't grow up. Right. <laughs> but it's, and it's like, so I think it has a shelf life, yeah. but only if you don't continuously reinvent for the next crowd coming up. And I think Future mm -hmm. does a great job at staying here with his subject matter, but then also pandering to that the audience. The new audience comes in rather Correct. than rather growing, than with, growing yeah. with your audience. Like, if you look at other artists, Cole, even, I mean, I'll give Drake some credit. He's evolved a little bit, not a lot, but, <laughs> um, but uh, it went musically, yeah, not, right, not, right. not antics, right? But musically, he's evolved. And then you got Kendrick and you got other people who have matured in their music subject matter. Mm -hmm. um, the problem, though, is you then at some point you start to look crazy, you know what I mean? Because it's like, bro, you you might you might get up because hip hop now, the age limit on hip hop has had has has gone up. Yeah. You're no longer the old guy in the room. You're 40, or you know now you can be 50 and like people still uh, hove with the God did versus like yeah. it's still like culture shifting, yeah. right? Yep. So I want to know what a future song sounds like when he's 45. Like, is it still like uh, you know? Is it, <laughs> Like I want to know, cause I, t t to me, when you when you stay at that level, it's, at some point you become the old guy in the corner. Like, why is he here at the, yeah, at the twenty-one yeah, and the over? Club, yeah. At the twenty-one and over event, like who is, <laughs> yeah. whose uncle is that type shit? But I think that the music's to me getting even better. Like that's why it works. It's like for him and Metro again to put, come together and make these very both albums are great to me. Very unique albums and different the R and B side, more the hip hop side of it. Um, I just think his voice, his delivery, even I mean, on that T Grizzly song, like his, the way he's cutting through with his verses, is like he, he keeps getting better as an artist. So I think that's what you're really listening to. Like you, cut, you listen to the vibe of what he's saying more so than being like, wow, the subject matter is very similar to, uh, you know, the, the TS2 or whatever. Like, yeah. like I just think that he's making, he makes the bops. And like, you know, also think I think like he doesn't get that credit to me either of like, you know, we come from like the Southern rap star was like a Jeezy or a T.I. Like, where do you put this guy now? Because no one's had as long a run as he's had, right? Why don't we, why don't we say he's the greatest Southern rapper of all time? I remember I did the GQ thing and we had yeah. a conversation about being an all-time great and everybody went crazy. But it's like, look at the catalog, man. Look at the catalog. Look at the body of works. Where do you put, where do you put Future in, in, in relation? I mean, you, you, th you, Jeremy, where do you put Future in relation to the climate now? Is he, is he... The older, like, is he, a, he's not an OG, but he's not a YG either. Yeah, he's an interesting one. My thoughts on Future 2 shifted when I, when I heard him say that he doesn't even do lean anymore. He, does, he doesn't drink. He caught a lot of heat on You that. know, and, and, and I think 
that's why we look at the growth in the subject matter a little differently too. If he was really living that life and he was really, because even to Drake's point, he had that, that interview that went viral where he was like, you know, I still live this rap life. It was, it was yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, rap radio, yep. I, live, I live this rap life. Cole and Kendrick go home to their family, right? He's like, I'm still in the club. <laughs> and he was almost like a weird I'm flex. Outside. Yeah, but at least to that degree, I believe what he's talking about to, to, to some point. With Future, it's almost like he's on the outside and he's like puppet mastering it, but doing it so well that it sounds so good that I'm like, a little judgmental, but it's okay. All right, he's it still sounds... He's presenting you a lifestyle. Like he, yeah, he yeah. It's like so do we expect authenticity in our music? I, I do. That's why I don't listen to Future that often. Do you expect authenticity in the music? I think it's I think it's still authentic in the story he's telling to me as a, as a story as a songwriter and like the consistency of the story he's telling. If he doesn't do the drugs the same way he did maybe ten years ago, he's still telling the story like and, and putting you in that place of what he represents to it. Like he just he's sort of an enigma in terms of like how to again, you can't even box how him. Do you yeah. pin, how do you pinpoint what he is? Is he an MC? Blah, blah. But again, I just feel like. Again, just the bodies of work, the consistency, it just, it just, you, it can't be denied. Yeah. The reason why I brought that up is because, to your point, the people you brought up, right, like a Tip or a Jeezy, yeah, celebrated as a Southern superstar. Like you got, I mean, Jeezy was probably the first person in hip hop history to tell on himself in real time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hide the rest of the yams at my auntie house, <laughs> and then, I, and then what? And then, you know, like, <laughs> and, then what? and then what? Like, he's telling you everything he's doing. <laughs> And I just finished Jeezy's book too, so that was dope. But um, yeah, it was all happening in real time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. he wasn't that far removed yeah. from like I'm talking about even Fifty Cent when he, when when Fifty said he forgot his first deal, like he went into the streets with his yeah. with his advance. Of course. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. I don't necessarily require that much authenticity because I don't want to see harm brought to these brothers yeah, yeah, who yeah. are doing the music. And I would prefer Future not to do drugs, to be honest. Yeah. No, I, exactly. But, but I, I'd like some somebody too. else's career. Like it's crazy how he was able to overcome that too. Like once he yeah. that backfire, like that could, that kind of thing could cripple somebody's career, but it didn't. No, case. he's he's still going. How how do you guys feel about like? the critique on Pusha T rapping about the same thing in every song. Is that something, do you want to see a I different artists, side of Push? No, I think that, I mean, I think it's cool, you know, like when people try to step out of their comfort zone and try different things as artists, but I'm also no, not people who just deliver what their constant quality is. Like back in the day, EP, I'm old, EPMD, they used to say, they're making records the same way. EPMD is just like, where's the different sounds? And it's just like, but that's what I want from them. Like, I think you can still have growth in it without having to experiment. I didn't like when Drake did Honestly Nevermind because I don't feel he executed it to the same greatness of his other albums. Right? You don't give so, a point just for the attempt. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think the attempt, this because you want to try to show range, it's great, it's supported, but the execution has to be there. You know, and I think if the pusher or future, future are sitting on one dynamic and they keep delivering, then it's undeniable. Do you want to hear To Pimp a Butterfly from Future? No. It, 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 yeah, I don't know what his growth would look like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to your point, it's like what if whether he's an OG or in the younger generation. I don't know what I would expect from him. And maybe to your point, if I go, if I know what I'm getting every time I go to Wendy's, I'm ordering the same thing. Do maybe you think get a different he can stuff. Do it. I, this is you know what I would actually like to see from Future. Remember when they when uh, it was his first album and he kind of had a few pop songs on there. And and then he like made, Molly, he made that whole Molly Cyrus he, yeah box. yeah and he, he and he was like oh they tried to make me into a, a pop star or whatever I would actually think it would be fire to hear a future either R and B album fully like he's done a couple mm -hmm. times but really go but into but it. really go yeah. into it and make a love album and make it either pop or R and B I think that would be fire I don't want to hear R and B a record from Future I want to hear Future become a full on superstar I want him I want him to do records with Miley Cyrus I want him to do records with Doja Cat and fucking go full top forty. Full top forty. Yeah. Like I want him to. I want him to. I want him to be so so crazy where he can do a Flow Rider record and he can do a a, a Metro record and it'd be the same future. Yeah. That yeah that would be fire. We'll see where where future takes it next. Speaking of taking it next, Cardi B <coughs> recently Barty. made Cardi Barty made some headlines for a couple reasons. So she did an interview where she said. She did not want to drop an album this year after doing a lot of promo that seemed like she was gearing up for an album. 
She said, exactly, and I tell myself this all the time, this is in response to a fan, and I hate that I fall back and start interacting again, and it bites me in the ass. Anyway, no album this year, in caps. I don't care. I'm relaxing this year, dropping these features I already committed to, and traveling and enjoying my summer. She's really rich. So she is very rich, (laughs) but there was uh, a few people in particular who weren't super happy with this response, and we got the first ever label reply, to my knowledge, uh, to a no album tweet where they said, Atlantic Records said, Cardi B's upcoming album is one of the most anticipated this year. We can't wait to put it out, even if we have to sneak into her studio and take it with eye emojis. And when you reposted this on Instagram, we had a comment from Russ, uh, who is no no stranger to the major label market <laughs> and being independent. And he said, "This is insane." <laughs> LOL. <laughs> so what? So are, Mike Kaiser, <laughs> Twitter fingers. Come hey, on, Mike. Uh, you, you guys know Mike Kaiser, right? Yeah, he's he's on the Atlantic. Uh, uh, what do we think of this? Perfect. And do we think Cardi is actually going to have to drop an album at this point? I feel bad because I feel like, I mean I'm a big fan of Cardi, and I think her last album was a classic. It's, it, there hasn't been a great female rap album to me, full body of work since then. Um, but yeah, I think the problem is that, you know, Heck probably speaks to this even more than us in terms of like the mindset of an artist and how do I roll out my stuff. And, how, and to me, she's trying to set up this perfect rollout and it just hasn't all landed. Like the Enough record I thought was good, but it got kind of stepped on because uh, Sexy Red's record, Glorilla's record were actually just better records, unfortunately, you know? So like, Fortunately, no, you know what I'm saying, unfortunately, but they were better records. So it's hard to build this sort of momentum and everything come to place and have this perfect rollout. I think that Cardi needs to pivot and just drop the album. We don't have to have the big lead single. We don't have to have the big build up. I think that she's so in demand. I'd almost like her to just surprise drop the shit and then you can shoot the singles and do everything after at this point. So I think that's what kind of Atlantic's saying at this point. Like, I'm sure they have versions of an album already that they've been working on for a very long time. So... I mean, I think that missile is going to still come at the end of the year. I think, you know, she has her moments where she's arguing with fans and you want to please your fans, and she can kind of get caught up in the emotion of that at times, but I think she'll still end up delivering the album this year. I wholeheartedly disagree with what Elliot just said. Okay. Um, because when you're talking music business, there's still business that has to happen around the music, and I know, like, we get caught up into the creative process and thinking that it's just art and, you, you know, it's my expression and songs, and it's not that. There's a whole, you got to think, somebody like Cardi B, there's an entire ecosystem based around her. Okay. She, and, and, and this is, I, well, I'll unveil a little bit as far as music business, but Cardi B has a product manager. She has an A&R. She, has, she employs people. Yeah, there are people who, get, who make six figures based on the business of Cardi B. Mm-hmm. You can't just throw a record out. Like that's that day has is over with when it comes when you are a, a, a star, even when you're a superstar or even a star, whatever tier you're at, there's business that has to happen around you. And that business has to be executed. If you look at like even during the quarantine, none of the big artists, major layer artists dropped because there's a tour that has to go with that. And there are hundreds, if not thousands of people who are employed based around the business of this person's album dropping. Right. Yeah. There's people who do radio promotions, there are people who do digital promo, there are social media teams, there's like an entire ecosystem that goes along with you just dropping an album, so just throwing shit out, that's like... But isn't it hurting her, the idea that you have to have this big singles, like the the old, to me that's the old way of doing things. It is the old way of doing things. You can't do an album until you have the big first single and everybody's pumping it and like, stopping going so much with what she's been doing the past couple of years has hurt her. To me, the, the strongest entity would be to just say, fuck it, here's the album. You know, not, with, not without a plan around it. I'm not saying like that, like sloppily executed, but I just think that it's almost at this point, you have to deliver that thing. Because also a lot of times with these artists, it's just like, not even J. Cole, I think, is going through this, right? When you say you're going to do an album or yeah, people's anticipation, up. you know, it's, it's fatigue at this point because yeah. people have their own judgment of what they think it's supposed to sound like or what it's supposed to be. You know, what's the fall off from J. Cole going to be like? You know, I think it's hurt Drake in the past of like, hyping up the name certified lover boy what does this sound like and i think that cardi's running into a cycle now with this that i think is hurting her business i disagree because people are going to get the get it consumed when they drop it it's not it's every year people wait for this mcrib to come back and the mcrib <laughs> And the McRib come back, everybody go buy the McRib. But at no point while the McRib we is are not, not sponsored by McRib. I'm just saying, at no point record. are people are like, oh, my God, I need this thing. Yes, that's, that's a microcosm of a representation of people who are online and are actively participating in 
the taunting of this project dropping. Yeah. The general pop, gen pop, they live in their life, and they're going to get it when it drops. It's not like, yeah. I, I don't like the, the the sense of urgency, like even when I'm in the studio with, with rappers now, and they're like, man, I got to get out, the fans need it. Who needs it? T tell me who needs it. <laughs> who, who are you Texas, talking when you? Say, you? When you say they <laughs> are waiting on me, who is they? How many people are they? Well, I, I think it's twofold, though. Okay, there is the bias of us all thinking that we're more important than we are. There, I, I forget what the study was, but it's like you're in a classroom, and you think everyone's, like, looking at you, and no one is even paying attention to you. It's just you. <laughs> West Coast. So that is a point. But the other point that I think does matter with the anticipation is, yes, the general population isn't thinking about Cardi B on a daily basis. Do I need an album? But let's say Cardi does drop the album. The expectation of going in is I want the McRib to taste the same that it did last time. Facts. And if the McRib doesn't taste as good, the next year I might not go back to Facts. the McRib. Yeah. So there is a high expectation level that I think Cardi's feeling and the label's probably feeling. And they're like, we can't put out mediocrity. So that's, that's tough. That, and that's yes. my point. You can't just, oh, this is what I'm feeling. I'm going to just throw it out. Because then what happens is you get, you get people who sit on the bigger picture and critique your art that you just threw out. And be like, man, I don't know what the fuck this shit is. And be like, man. And now it's a double whammy because. You waited this long you, for it, this. Yeah. Now, and now we're all disappointed. I, I, I Take your time. Get it right. Don't. And I, me personally, I talked to Charlemagne about this too. Um, I don't know if he talked about this publicly. But me and him had this conversation where we both think that Cardi probably shouldn't drop another album. Like she should just yeah, at this just point, singles, right? Yeah. She, she just do drop records, and I think Cardi is beyond the point of an album at this point. Cardi B is a global superstar, right? So when you become a global superstar, you kind of have more to lose in in putting a body of work out, outside of just pure expression in art, right? Just pure passion putting out the art. But she can survive just putting records out at yeah. this point, and I didn't really care for what you brought. What song enough? You brought? Enough. enough. That was a, that was the Missy thing, right? No, it came after that. that, the, was a, that okay, was oh, oh, the Missy Freestyle. Yeah, Missy Freestyle. The Missy Freestyle. I didn't, I didn't care for that, but Enough was okay to me. It I wasn't liked, enough? Yeah, I just, I, <laughs> I, I, if I was going to go, she should have went when WAP came out. You know what I mean? If she I was, did have a moment. If I was going to drop, that's when I would have dropped, when yeah. WAP was going crazy. And, and to also, to, I don't know if, how you feel about this, Jay, but to counter Elliot's point about you do need that. When you were an artist of, a, and I had this conversation with YG when he before he went and made Big Bank, right? Mm -hmm. Me and him were in the studio, and I was like, "Bro, you can't just put your album out because he had some some songs and they were mid." Apologies, YG, but um, he had some mid songs, and I told him, "I'm like, look, bro, you're at the at the point at the level where you're at, and you're on a major label. You cannot drop your record just because you feel like dropping your record. There's business that goes along with your record, mm -hmm. so you have to have a, a business card record, a single." Right, not necessarily. It doesn't have to go top ten in the country, but you have to give the label something to work, and the, and not look at it akin to if you have a great plumber or a great barber. When you go to when you when you go to Texas, be like, yo, I need a barber. Somebody send you something. That's a business card. That's what your single does. It, it 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 talks for you when you're not in the room, and you need that when you're playing at that level. You just need it. Yeah, but I just, I just don't want it to feel like I I understand the argument you and Charlamagne say at this point. It's like almost you shouldn't even give us an album because. It could only be something that could hurt the brand, I guess. But I feel like she's so talented, and it's just like you can get so caught up in, like you what said, the, the people, like her little stands and the anti Nikki fans and everybody pulling her in these different ways, personal life and things going on there, ups and downs of that, sharing that publicly. You know, I just think that I, I just want the art, man. I think that she has a lot to still stay and contribute. And I wonder how much do you guys think that just the landscape of like all these different female artists have kind of like, make her maybe feel like she may have missed her moment, right? Because now we do have a sexy red, we do have a glow red, we have these women out here making some kick-ass joints. Like, is it almost like she missed her turn of, of doing this? Of no, doing she kicked it out. open. Yeah. That was, it was just Nikki and everybody else at one yeah, point. of course. It was just Nikki. Nikki was the one, right? Absolutely. And then Cardi came, and then I think Cardi did a better job at ushering in the girls. Yeah. That's from just my on every I will say one, one time Nikki got mad at a video that I wrote that, that made that argument. I was making the argument that I, I didn't think Nikki did the same thing that some, are, some of her counterpoint parts did where they brought people on, did features. But I was re-looking at that, and this isn't just because I got hate from the barbs. Okay, this isn't me just flipping. She actually has done, at least over the last few years, a really good job that I don't think she gets enough credit for of – Hopping on a lot of songs. And yeah. there are a lot of problems, obviously, that occur with, with rappers, yeah. too. But she's done features for people and brought them into her world, too. Now. Was, was that, I, I couldn't remember. When did that start, though? Was that after? Now. 
You I'm not Cardi, on no you smoke. Cardi, you think Cardi influenced it? I don't think first. Cardi influenced it. I think that Nicki didn't do a great job at ushering in the next wave. And to, I don't know what, I'm not her. No, I have, I've never had a conversation with Nicki Minaj, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that from a, from a, from the optic standpoint, she could have done a better job at ushering in a new wave of women because Nicki is by far the biggest female rapper ever. ever. But Nicki's 50 Cent. They're from Southside. They're killers. They're queens. They just, she want to be, the competitive fire, I think, was what it was. Cardi didn't come in to me as competitive. The competitive nature of Cardi was just to prove that she I'm not some it. BH1 yeah. chick. I, I take this music seriously. I'm going to put my work in and like, you're going to take me serious as an artist. That was her fight. Nicki's fight was to be, I want to be the Drake. I want to be the, the biggest in the game. I want to stand next to these dudes. I burned, I murdered Kanye on the joint. I want to set that standard. I want to be the. That's so she wasn't trying to like, we are the world. Anybody? Yeah, she, she was. She was barring up. <laughs> she, she was, was like, yeah, she, that, that is that is the and the competitiveness of that might have actually affected when there wasn't room for that many at the because we we can say that there was, but there really wasn't. Yeah. There wasn't room in the eyes of the audience or the radio or the labels or whatever it was for that many female rappers. So she, when she got her spot, she might have actually thought like. I gotta hold on to this spot because as long there's as I can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she hadn't seen a, we hadn't seen a female artist in that might ever take the success to that higher level. Like Lil Kim had a run, obviously, like from the era in the '90s and stuff. But you look at Nicki's run; I mean, it was it was unprecedented. unprecedented. Now we've never seen anything like Nicki Minaj, and to her credit, she's done a great job recently of of contributing and, and participating. And that's a criticism that a lot of people give, you know, her in the past. Same thing with, you can even say Kendrick for that matter, like yeah. not participating yeah. in the culture, like on the level that we would like him to, but it is what it is. Yeah. No, shout out to Nikki and, and shout out to Cardi. And I hate that you can't be a Nikki and Cardi fan. Yeah. At the same time. yeah. You can. I, like, I like them both. I know, of course. We, I think we all do. But I just, but you know how they're, 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 the weaponizing. They gotta do a thirty for thirty one day about motorsport. Let me tell you, motorsport something. is motorsport. one of the craziest moments <laughs> in hip hop. Let me tell you something. I, I had this idea. Well, I, it's not like I had an original idea, but I, I had said this on the radio a couple of years ago, and I was like, imagine if the women were able to galvanize together and create. The, it would be the biggest hip hop tour probably ever. Like an up and smoke for. Like an up and smoke for women. Yeah. Right. It'd yeah. be Nicki and Cardi and Glow and Meg and. Can you imagine? It would be sold out arenas and SZA, and then like you'd start incorporating like, bro, and it's just all women. It just be like well, Nikki, ladies' Nikki night tour. Would have like the headline though. The, and the, see, yeah, I don't want to go so. and, then, see, and that's where it would get fucked up. But I'm just saying. <laughs> Wait, but I, all today, like what I don't like, know, bro. Clothes? I ain't figured. I'm not a tour manager. What I'm saying is, I mean, Megan Glow right now are doing arenas. I, what I'm saying is, imagine you were to put all these women on one bill and push them around the country. It would be insane. It would pro it would be crazy. Well, Nikki just sold out that amazing. And she's doing it herself. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't even. Need okay, that. we'll put them in football stadiums. Then. How okay, about that? Yeah, Is that yeah, better yeah. for you? <laughs> yeah. All right, put them in football stadiums <laughs> and let Beyonce headline. Is that better for you? That's a, that, there we go. There we go. Is that cool? Yeah, that, All right. Cool. I don't know who goes before Beyonce. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, it still comes down to somebody. Like, they even hyped up Hard Knock Life. Jay Z touched that stage last, right? Like, he, DMX did not close those shows. Jay-Z closed the shows. And Jay obviously talks about how DMX was such a better performer than him at that time. And it, have to, it made him have to step his game up. But, you know, the problem with everybody act like we're going to come together is that at the end of the day, there has, has to be, be the one, one true headliner. I agree with so you. So does, does Cardi accept that and let Nicki close the show? Then did M, did M and Jay swap nights? Is that what they did? Yeah, they did. Uh, and they all say interaction on stage. But, yeah, they split it. If it was in Detroit, they did it that way. In New York, they did it the other way. I guess they couldn't do a hometown on that. But they could do... <laughs> they, they can figure out dates. <laughs> I just want to see it just as a fan. Not for real. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Just a ladies' night tour. Just have yeah. Angie come out and host. That'd be crazy. Nah, that'd hard. be fire. That's hard. But, and, and, and last point on, on Cardi, to your point about the albums. I don't think that she needs to drop an album, but seeing that tweet, it seems like there's some people that feels like Atlantic, the album Atlantic's was promised. Like yeah, they said uh, whatever way you get that hey, project At the end of the up. day, this is music business, and there's business to be had. So I, I see what where Atlantic is. They didn't spend some money. And they want it back. But do you think that's foul? Like to Russ's point, obviously we love Russ and Russ is the independent crusader about all yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Russ. Is that a, is that an evil big machine tweet to you that Atlantic Records is saying like run that shit? We, it's coming out whether <laughs> she likes it or not. Like is that like big bad record industry type shit to you the way you look I, at it? I don't think the sentiment is evil. I think the tweet was wild. Like the sentiment, <laughs> the sentiment to me makes sense. Like to your point, it's music business. If I invested let's say $100 million roughly into my 
number one or number two artist that's running my label and maybe <laughs> keeping multiple buildings lights on. Yep. I think as a business person, even if you have no malintent, you might want to say, okay, we put a lot into you. Give us run something. Me that, run me that album, You know, baby. give me that album. Now, <laughs> to tweet it and say we're going to run into the studio and steal it from you is another thing. That's a little wild. That's, that's a little insane. <laughs> that's, a little wild. that's a little insane. Yeah, it's a little crazy. But I enjoy corporate pettiness. That's one of my favorite. Uh, I like scenes. I like corporate pet. I like when McDonald's will tweet yeah, Wendy's or Art. Like, I like that shit. You ever see the clip? Uh, R.P. Chris Lighty, great manager. Uh, it was him about with Tribe Called Quest. It was just like. Give me a record, B, because Q-Tip would be just always fine-tuning shit. You know how this get, you, I'm sure you dealt with a head of like, when is the artist like finally going to let this thing go yeah. and ready to bring it to the world? And it was like, he's like, he's like I went to the studio, man, give me the record, B, give me the record, B. <laughs> like, I had to take it from Q-Tip's hands and just plow it out to get it to the people. That's how it goes sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes the artists are too, not too, because it's the artist's art, but very uh, protective over their art. And so. I said, when people used to get on J Electronica, I kind of sh shot them some bail because it was like, I say that there's that that is the there is a courage in creation, right? And of, of putting it out, like letting that out to the world. Like, especially in this era where they're gonna tell you right away. Right away. If yeah. you like it or not, or have memes about it, take your lyrics out of context, make these jokes and just get their shit off. So th there's a courage in creation. So I just I work I, I don't want Kari to be kind of crippled by this courage of creation. I want her to just tell the story. I just want the records, Cardi. Just give me the bops. I'm good with that. I'm cool. Invasion of Privacy is a classic, bro. What BPM do you want in this one? Would I want Cardi? Yeah. I like Cardi between <laughs> I like Cardi between 65 and 85 BPM. Okay. Um, but I really would like to see her on something that's 100. What are BPM. some records in that that? Uh, um, see? like all her stuff is between the, around there, but like like Up, I really like Up. Up is producing up double hard. time, but Up is 82 fine. BPM. Yeah. So I, I really like Cardi in that pocket right there. Like G Easy No Limit. Mm -hmm. I like her in that pocket. That's like 87 BPM. So I like her right in that mid range. Get that rap nerd on. We got the BPM. Yeah, we got the BPM. Yeah, there's somebody. <laughs> somebody's in the comments right now. Oh, I hate that BPM. <laughs> but the, so the next topic is actually twofold because you brought up Jay Electronica. I thought it was it was funny. But so Rhapsody, uh, I recently interviewed. Rap her. is back. Rap Shout is back. Rap. Shout out to rap. I, I I say that she has the rap album of the year so far. Damn. That's, Ooh, okay. that is my how do y'all do this? <laughs> Like, how do y'all so really far. just confidently say shit like that? The Absolutely. album just dropped. So far, yeah, but I, if I heard it maybe a week prior, and then, then I've given it a couple weeks, and I sat he, with it, and I He had the early drop by though. Jeremy on the low had a little Bro, we all hear real shit real. early. The album just presented to the world, what, a week ago? So it, I'm, it, I'm saying as of right now in this moment. I could change my mind. Okay. Okay. Platinum in the heck household. Yeah, exactly. Right? exactly. <laughs> it's true. So <laughs> Platinum in the heck household. <laughs> the heck household is crazy. <laughs> so two things. She said that Lil Wayne's verse made her, actually, and she said, I'm proud to say this because he's, he's the GOAT, made her rewrite her verse 27 times. I can see that. Wow. So I had, before we get into Rhapsody, I had a question for you guys. Shout what, out for her for being that honest. Yeah, That's shout amazing. out to Rapper. Yeah, yeah. She was super honest in that interview. Yeah. What's a verse that you think a rapper should have rewritten? As in somebody else washed oh, them on a song? Oh, the ultimate is, um, uh, fucking... <laughs> Metro will tell you to shoot you. Boom, 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 boom. Father, stretch my hands. Oh. Uh, the asshole bleach shit. Like, come on, dog. Like, you still. Well, took you took your me right out of the moment. <laughs> you, like, this is, it record has the ultimate, like, amazing production buildup. And then you come in by bleached assholes. And what the fuck? Like, come on, dog. <laughs> it was a good meme, but it, yeah, it, it, it ruined, kind of ruined the song. The hard part six. Oh my god! <laughs> I should, that was a lob. You're the worst, man. You, you, had to, you had to slam it. We threw it up. You had to slam it. No, I'm, what you mean? That you? Asked, he asked the question. You could have wrote that shit over. But <laughs> so, what would you? What would you have suggested? Just do another record. What about a classic? Well, give us, give us another. A one. classic record. Um. Damn, a classic record that the verse should be rewritten. You know what's crazy? Um, uh, how do you feel about? Okay, do you feel, uh, do you remember? Uh, I was just playing this record actually. The bounce, Jay, Jay, and yeah. and, and Yay. You feel like Yay got him on that one? Oh, I gotta go back. You remember the verse? Okay, what about Diamonds? Because I was doing this. Oh, Diamonds remix. I was going back and forth, and I was listening to 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 the Yay and yeah, and, yeah. and the, and the Hove. Back and forth, right over the years. Yeah. And <laughs> I was because I, I love Otis. Otis is yeah. 
phenomenal. Top tier. Absolutely. Like, Otis is fire. Stick your hand into the cash register Bro. and grab something. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Otis is so fire to me. Like, yeah. I love, I really wish that would have went differently because that back and forth is is top tier emceeing, right? But uh, the Diamonds remix, I feel like uh, Hove, like, kind of. Did, he ate him. He, oh, he, obli- yeah. he obliterated, obliterated. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't even remember Ye's verse yeah. on that. But you remember the business, man. Like, no matter what, even that 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 verse was crazy. Yeah. I used to hate that that era of like the blueprint era is to act like that that Jay was on decline and Ye was here and Jay needed Ye and all this type of stuff to get hot again or whatever. Like, I remember going to the drone shows. I don't know if you guys remember. Like, they would split the stage and like one guy would be on the main stage and one guy would be the backstage. And that was the first time I was felt so good as more of a whole fan and a yay fan. Like it was the only time I had seen a card mostly that the crowd was looking the other way and not looking at the main stage more. So I was like, oh, Hope still yeah, got it. Like like he... more the, it was it was split, but more of the crowd was looking towards Jay. And then they instead of looking on the front stage where Jay was at. So I, I feel under- like I feel like Jay actually got washed by Kanye a few different times though. Monster. Okay. Uh never let you down. Run this town. What you mean, Run never this let you town. down? Never let you down. Jay comes in and is completely off topic. He's just talking about being <laughs> top of the charts. It was like out of Okay, the, okay. So, it was a good verse. So to be fair, he probably didn't even listen to the record. That was Ye, That was Ye's first album. You know what I'm saying? I know. So behind. listen to your artist's album, maybe. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> what you're supposed like, to. He probably even listened to that verse. Listen to the song. He's like, yeah, yeah, pull that shit up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Did he say something like, yeah, hey, guru. this bullshit? Guru. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He I'm kind like, of insults the shit. And he like, tries to come back with a second. I'm like, I don't know. But, okay, my pick for rewritten verse, J Electronica mm. on control. Oh, yeah. Because I think it was so un- – it was a great, it was a good verse. He got all biblical and spiritual, yeah. but I always joke that if you were to premiere Jay Electronica's verse from that song today on the radio, it'd be a brand new verse. I have never liked anything that Jay Electronica has ever done. Don't do that. Don't exhibit we, C. Don't do that. I, st- I, st- I say what he's I one say. Of, he's one of the greatest rappers that never was. He's one of the gr- when he <laughs> rapped. <Damn. laughs> no, this is what I mean. And I and what I said was bad. I, no, 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 no. What I, I said was inflammatory, hold right? On. <laughs> Yeah, what the fuck? Hold on, let me explain. I want that. the a hey, comment section. <laughs> which which take? Do, you, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> let me, do your thing. Let's go. Listen, what you mean? Listen, <laughs> let me let me clarify that. J Electronica, when he rapped, <laughs> when he was putting things out into the world, was, in my opinion, one of the greatest to ever touch a mic. Flows, lyrics, metaphors, tone, everything you'd want in a rapper, he had. Now, I say greatest that, that never was is because we never got to see his full potential. That's all I meant. We never got to see the debut album. We saw the J album. That was and a we heard, album finish that album. Right, that was a Hove mixtape. It was a Hove mixtape featuring Jay Lex. It was hard. Know, yeah. but, and, and actually what, what you said was interesting because Jay Lex says it on that album where he said, what, I forget the actual bar, but he says, like, what do you want me to put this out just for you guys to judge me? Like, I thought he was this mythical, godlike creature who went back into his room and didn't and only came out when the world needed it but that made me think maybe there was actually insecurity because of what we're talking about with cardi b the pressure of yeah. being so the courage highly of touted. creation yeah. courage of creation you know okay so i said yeah we, let's get back to you so i said i have never liked anything that jay electronic has ever done and my man said the greatest rapper that He's never was. He's the greatest rapper that never was. And I know they're going to tear me apart for what I said. That's crazy. <laughs> of, course, of course. That's insane. You need that's to explain your take. About to make a I'm just not a fan. <laughs> I'm yeah. just not a fan. You're a it fan. You like, fuck that shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> but he's such a he's such a uh, enigma. He's in Mexico, I believe, right? Uh, Rory from R- Rory Oh, Mall yeah, yeah. Did you just sign him? Yeah. It's like. Rory manages Jay Electronica? Rory manages Jay Electronica. Oh, wow. Yeah. Whoop. Uh, okay. Different. I, I, that's I cra- that's I crazy. Questions. I just want. Well, he, we'll, we'll be sure <laughs> to send him the clips. If I, if I speak, I promise I will not speak. <laughs> nah, he's definitely managing them. Okay. Well, shout out to shout out to Jay Lek. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Jay Lek. I respect him. I don't know him as a person or a man or, or I don't know. I listened to the whole mixtape that came out. That's disrespectful. I listened to the project that they did, the joint project yes. that he did with Jay Z. Um, I don't want to discount the man's work, but I'm not a fan. On no I remember level. we had a listen session uh, with Title. That you know, that's when the world shut down when that album came out. Yeah, it was the day of. I think it was the day of. So we were supposed to be for the for the readers and listeners, subscribers and stuff. So then it was like, fuck it, got canceled, and like we just decided to still just go to the studio. Like so, Elect is there, Hope shows up, 
and we're just playing the record. And I remember Big Sean comes in. He's the only guy who's got, like, mask on and, like, gloves and stuff. He's like, y'all ain't got no glove? Y'all ain't got no mask? <laughs> like, he was ahead of the COVID wave that this shit was coming. Like, we were all drunkenly, like, like dapping it up and slobbing yeah. on each other and turning up and partying and pause. stuff like that. Then it's, yeah, pause. Yeah. <laughs> Rewind. Nah, like, you know, just excited, like, yeah. high-fiving and just kicking it. And then next thing you know, it's like... The world End of the world. Let's shut the world down. JLX. They're trying to get shut the world down, man. How, you, how could you say he's not the great man you, that he is? Man? You know what's crazy, too? I, I interviewed, it was a producer, G Rai, who was working with Hit Boy and, at the time, and he said that Jay. Right? Yeah, they did, they did Jay like crazy on that one <laughs> with the smile. But I feel like there's only like three Getty images of Jay like because <laughs> like, he never pops outside. But uh, G Rai said he was in the studio as Hit Boy, Nas, Big Sean, I believe, and who was it? Maybe, and I'm, I think Jay Electronica came in, and I can't remember. Okay, I'm gonna mess up the story now because it was either Jay Electronica heard a Nipsey Hustle verse that made him leave the studio, or, which I'm rolling with for the sake of the story, Nas came into the studio, heard a Jay Elect verse, and it was so mind blowing that he had to leave the studio. That sounds more more feasible at hit, at hit studio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, Jay Elect might have some stuff in the tuck that we that is that might make you a fan. You might actually. I like doubt it. it, but I'm I'm willing to listen. But I seriously doubt it. Is that what? That's that's fucked up. No, no, it's a, it's a take. Your truth, brother. Gonna top. <laughs> we have a gonna top five and JLX bottom hundred. I'm just not a fan. It's not. It's not personal. I'm just yeah. not. A, I'm just not a fan. I, I don't. I don't. When I listen to my big homies was listening to Exhibit C on at nauseum, and I'm, I don't understand why this is so great. Maybe it's maybe it's beyond me. Maybe I'm just a dumbass. Yeah, it's like the, what people used to joke about, like Cole fans. Like, yeah. you don't understand. Yeah. you don't get <laughs> the it. Complexity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You didn't hear what he yeah. said. <laughs> get off my dick. That shit was crazy. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, but, <laughs> okay, let's let's talk about what everybody is a fan of right now. Rap album of the year. I gave my pick, but who do you guys have? I know it's early in the year, but as of this moment, if the year ended, who had the best project of 2024? It's about halfway through the year. It's too early, bro. Like I, I'm oh, still wow, listening. Who had early, the best man. of it's the first half? I'm still listening to Rhapsody. I mean, you guys haven't heard Vince Staples yet. Like, oh yeah, Vince. Could yeah, come oh, right? oh yeah, Uh-oh. we gotta talk about Vince. Like, yeah. Come on, bro. Like, <laughs> like you no, know, Vince might be out by the time this comes out, right? When does this come out? Mm-mm. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, what, does it drop next next Friday? He's dropping this Friday. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So the Vince. Okay, so we'll reconvene on the Vince Staples album, yeah. but it, it'll be out by the time. Okay. You, so you've heard it. You've heard the full album. You haven't heard. It's some shit coming, bro. So, all right. You can even no, use the unreleased. What exists yeah. now? What exists out? Uh, you know what? This is it ain't even a controversial take. I'm going to just go. So far, I'm going to go Rapsy. Maybe Future. You got to put Future and, and Metro in there at some point. Which yeah. one? Do you like the? I like the, the first one. Prodigy, yeah. yeah I don't like do you to use Prodigy the way they did? I like the first one. Game. It's just the second one was like, all right, bro. Like, <laughs> God. <laughs> like, this. You gave this man two albums. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> bro, that shit slaps though, too, man. That it was good, yeah. Too. Um, but I, I, I just. want the first album, the Future Metro. Yeah, you got to go to first That's one. Yours. But I like, I like. I'm still listening to it, obviously, but I like the rap album just because I like what she's talking about. I do want to, I can't wait to sit down. I'm supposed to go to the studio and talk to rap because there, she, she said something on the beginning of the album and then later on she kind of contradicted herself. And so I'm interested in hearing where that came from with the duality. I don't want to spoil it, but yeah. I don't want to give away the, but it's a lot of duality in this yeah. album from Rapsy. I like that she's making, like, she got a couple bops on there. You know what I mean? I like that she's extremely vulnerable, talks about, talking about her insecurities. Yeah. To me, it's like an evolved rap. It's still rap. It's still Rhapsody. Yep. Does, she doing what she does, but it's she, to me, she's taking more risks yep. and she's putting herself out there more so than we saw. I haven't saw this really. I mean, obviously, she's only dropped like one or two projects in, over the span of the last, I don't know, eight years or whatever. But Layla's Wisdom, we got to see how dope she is. Yeah. This one, I think we're getting to see who rap is. Who she really is. You know yeah. what I mean? And her government name. I know she says it, I don't put it out there, but <laughs> we get to see that that side of her, which is dope to me. Yeah. yeah you got to respect the growth. And you said Future Metro? I'm too, yeah, I'm yeah. With Future Metro. I just thought it was dope. Again, man, he's the Southern leaders, man. I think, I think you know, Metro's the best producer in the game, I've said before. Um, and th- those two bodies of work are just are dope, like very different. But that first album, the, the way they utilize Prodigy is sort of like this muse. 
from a bunch of Atlanta yeah, right. dudes. Like, it just is ill. Like, real hip hop. I think that time Hip Boy said uh, about, uh, what's the line he said about uh, Shout Hit? Uh, about how I never heard Metro, Bam- Metro Boomer do Boom Bap or some shit. Yeah. And then you hear the Everyday Hustle Like William thing. Like, he, to me, inspired that. It's like, you know, it's pure hip hop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been a good year so far. Uh, also, I got a shout out to School by Q. That was, that was up there for me. Yeah, shout out to you. Um, let's go to your interview real quick uh-uh. uh the the instagram clip so it, i thought that was funny because we were talking even off camera about how they were really serious about this blocking thing when it comes oh to, daz yeah daz was was really daz, serious yeah man um shout out to chuck this little homegrown we got to sit down with the dog pound that's in, in its entirety the only one that exists with all three men with with snoop in it too okay um and you know they were gracious enough to have us at the compound Shout out to Fuzz and everybody, but we were talking at, uh, well, before we even started to, to, to do the pod, we were talking at, and Daz was like, yeah, I, you know, she's like, I didn't want to see nothing from these dudes. Like, you know, Daz is, that's my big homie, but Daz is kind of problematic when it comes to. <laughs> you know what he, Like, and I was telling him, I'm like, every time you get online, you either beef with somebody, it costs you money, or you got to call the attorney. <laughs> like, like, you have to call it's an a, attorney. It's or a something. costly tweet. It's a costly, every time Daz gets online, right? And so, when last time he got online, when they fell out, when they got into it or whatever, you know, he went, he went on a blocking spree and blocked everybody. <laughs> like, I'm talking about interns. I love a good blocking spree. He blocked Snoop, anybody that was related to Snoop. He he blocked he wives, blocked, cousins. He blocked corrupt. He blocked he blocked corrupt's wife. Oh my god! Like he was just blocking people, like on, on Instagram, like oh. block, block, block. He blocked fuzzy, like he blocked and, fuzz. He blocked fuzzy. Oh bro. god! And so the thing is, it was just a running joke, and Snoop was laughing about it, but he was like, "No, Daz was dead ass." Like, when, <laughs> like he was so serious. Like, yeah, he just anybody that was standing next to Snoop, related to Snoop, had anything to do with Snoop, the assistant, every blocked everybody. And that's just what he was on. So social media is not for everybody. No, it's not. <laughs> this, this is a clip right here. Oh, yeah, you play it. Yeah. What's your thoughts? What's your thoughts? Because Dad told us a story when he first caught, when he first reached out to you earlier. He was like, "Yeah, I pulled up to the studio. Corrupt didn't know I was here." And uh, he's like, "Y'all reached out to Snoop." He's like, "I thought it was just time to just get back." Because I asked him like, "What made what brought the energy back together?" And Dad was like, "It was just time to reach out to my cousin." And uh, he said he was he snuck in. And uh and uh corrupt came in and saw him sitting there like oh you snuck in here okay cool but what was your thoughts initially was I know it wasn't like a a thought that we we're gonna go in and do a project initially but what was your thoughts initially like when he first reached out like let's do some shit well my my little brother had passed away and one thing about my little brother is that he loved the fuck out of dad and he loved us together and to honor him you know my mission was to you know I started calling family members. After that, and, he was you know, gone. Yeah, then, he was attacking me. Then, oh, that's killing you. Yeah, yeah because <laughs> they, because they like they know we supposed to be together. We got family that. I love. mean, me and Snoop like we cousins, but we like brothers. brothers. We grew up together. Right. So family know that we family. So when we not right, they know we not right. Oh. So and they don't want to pick sides. Yeah. Like they supposed to. Right. So when I reach out to him, I'm like, man, y'all get dads. Let's figure it out. So me and him get on the line, and we communicate. And I'm like, man, come over and see me. He come over. I'm like, damn, corrupt is in town. Good, come over. Because we all need to, you know, but I didn't say Daz was coming. I just was like, just come <laughs> over. <Hold up. laughs> he in there, he in there. This is the first thing he say. You blocked me, Delmar. <laughs> <laughs> you blocked corrupt? That nigga blocked a hundred niggas on <laughs> <laughs> you know. That nigga's a great hey, man. Oh, my God. Like, you know, said you know, he on right. social media, Daz? I seen that man to do that. That nigga, Daz, yeah. blocked oh, every... They were niggas that didn't have to do with that for. He said, man, why Daz blocked myself? Because you were standing next to me. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know why I'm next to Snoop, I'm blocking it. I said the next to Snoop, because you know, blocked me. I'm just going on the road and all that shit, so... You like, fuzzy? Uh, yeah, black fuzzy. Yeah, yeah. black <laughs> fuzzy. Hey. What? what is this? Oh, Correct. Oh, hey, we all we got. Hey. We all we got. Hey, nigga, block hey, my wife. This bro, man, what's wrong with that? Hey, nigga, block my wife, Only man. Family can do do that. that, exactly. That's crazy, bro. Because we family. <laughs> you black <laughs> fuzzy? Yes. Correct. And his wife. He blocked my wife. You blocked his wife? My wife ain't got shit to do with shit. 
That nigga was like, oh, yo, you know, dog hit me and said, Club, it's time bro. to come back home. Let's roll. That is doing petty, this. bro. And then next thing you know, I said, okay. <laughs> you know, I called in and I told Dad, hey, I don't uh, want to be cutting the grass and see how time these niggas have it. <laughs> so right? So I said, man, the dog called. Whoop, I said, Delmar, get ready because the champ's going to be calling you. What? Okay. He's so nice at first. Okay. Boom. The next morning, I'm blocked. My wife is blocked. <laughs> I said, this nigga here, cuz. He wasn't even mad. I said, man, yeah, dog call, cuz. Get ready. He's probably going to be calling. And then I get on my iPad that ain't connected. And I can look at everybody's shit. <laughs> oh, you got a burner account? You got a burner account. Yeah. Yeah. That's petty, bro. What's wrong with you? No. You block everybody? <laughs> so my question is, who have you guys blocked as rappers, artists, and which artists and rappers have blocked you? I know you got that follow from Drake, obviously, but has have you ever asserted? <laughs> hey, you see that knife? How he dug it into? I know. I'm sorry. I'm twist sorry. That, I'm twist sorry. that knife, Jay. Little, you know, twist that form. Just a little, just a little poke. But and anybody else who oh, you you've thing, made man. up with now, but they, at one point had blocked you for one reason or another. I I blocked Jay Electronica recently. Got on my nerves because <laughs> you, you didn't like his music, right? No, he was getting. You know, he gets. That's what. Oh, but he also has a little weird thing with Kendrick too. Let's not forget that yeah, part. He does, yeah, he Okay. So he sent me some weird thing about Kendrick. So I was, it was something about one of the songs, and I was saying how the one of the Kate Out records was dope, and he was saying how it's not my opinion is this, and he started going off of me like talking down to me like he's the music authority. So I blocked him. <laughs> that sometimes right. you gotta just. Clear you blocked Jay Electronica. Well, I don't follow them. Did I don't follow them or block them? I just Mute. Shout out J Elect, man. Shout out J Elect after you block them. It's crazy. Yo, it's crazy. Yo. You know, how, you know how active I am on social media. But I used to pride myself that I'm not blocking nobody. Like, I could take yeah, this. You like, can I thick skin. I'm not bu- Now you say everything halfway. I'm, I'm on that. I'm like that type of time, man. I block everybody. I do, And then I'll do a video, like, of innovative way of showing me blocking a person. I'll follow them and unfollow them again. I'll save their tweet. I'll just do all these little weirdo stuff. <laughs> Antagonize. <and> then, <laughs> antagonize and then unblock, then block them. I'll do a block party. I haven't really. I don't think I blocked anyone. Never. I mean, not not anybody that's notable. Like I blocked a couple of people that were just trolls, but like Have I. Have you ever been blocked? I'm pretty know? sure I've been blocked. I've been. Oh, this girl blocked me, but she's not famous. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't like Rihanna blocked you? No, nah, no. Nah, this is a girl. She blocked me, but. Other than that, I don't think I've been blocked. I don't really do anything inflammatory other than share my opinion, and my opinion usually is rooted in truth. This, this show might West, get you blocked. West Coast. West Coast. You, West Coast. <laughs> you might get blocked by Jay Electronica, actually. We really? Might, I might be the only I'm one not, able I'm to not reach fan. Jay Electronica. So, so here's the thing. <laughs> so here's the thing. If I'm not a fan of yours and you block me because I'm not a fan of yours, how would that in the end make me a fan of yours? It's not. It's actually going to make you less of a fan. That's actually, uh, like, by deductive reasoning, it doesn't make sense. That's true. Once you bring deductive reasoning into it. West Coast. So West Coast. Okay, <laughs> another thing from your interview, too, that I thought was an interesting conversation was uh, Snoop buying back Death Row, and you guys yeah. were talking about why it meant so much. Yeah. And so I, I want to play the clip, but I also afterwards want to get your guys' take on label ownership, especially Facts. black label, label ownership and uh, artist-based ownership of, of labels and where we're at kind of in the landscape right now. We bring this full circle back because... From, from what I've seen and heard so far from the rollout, and I know the album's going to be phenomenal, um, how does that feel, like, putting this together, coming back, you know, three decades later? From I'm going to tell you how I feel, yeah. not to speak for everybody, but Please. when I first bought Death Row, I know it fucked everybody up because it wasn't a good feeling. Death Row didn't have a good feeling in everybody's mouth as far as what we did and the work we put in. So I know it kind of rub people the wrong way, but my mission was to clean it up, mm. to get everybody back in position, and, to, and to just help everybody do the shit that we was meant to do when Death Row was created. So once I got it, it took me about a year and a half to clean that shit up and make it respectable to where people would smile and shake hands when they see Death Row. And, yeah. you know, all sorts of people could always represent it and not feel like they're going to get beat up or none of that shit. <laughs> took all of that out of the equation. And then the next step was bringing the family back. Yeah. Like the original members that were still here, that's still alive. Whether it's Daz, Corrupt, Rage, RBX, you know, the people that, the foundation to this shit when we started, and they all in good health, good spirits. So my job as the leader and the owner of Death Row is to go get everybody, to put everybody back in position and do things for them to show them that this is the way it should have been done. Yeah. We're not gonna worry about what we can't fix. 
we still here. God giving us opportunity to keep doing what we do. And if we stay true to what we do, people going to love it. They're going to enjoy it. And we're going to still be able to be who we are. Like, who we, who we are, like, individually, not collectively, but individually, that's what made us dope, is that everybody brought something to the table. Mm -hmm. And now we get a chance to set the table again and let everybody bring something to the table. What's dope is, um, to, to Snoop sentiment, like, um, <laughs> I don't know if I should, but RBX, Rage, they're on the album. And, and to his point, you know, he that, that's, that's that's a real thing. You know, that's important to him. And Snoop has been on this super positive wave. Like I have, I, we we talked a bit off camera, and he's really on this like all encompassing positive, pushing positivity. That's yeah. kind of what he's on. And so him buying the, the label, what significant in a couple of ways for me personally is because I'm from LA and. Death Row, like, even take it or leave it, whatever you want to, however you want to feel about what Suge did and how he did what he did. You know, Death Row Records is a legendary, it's a staple in hip-hop history, you know. They sold, what, 65 million records in just under six years. That's insane. These are hard copies, physical physical yeah. CDs. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. people had to go to the store and buy 65 million of those. <laughs> that's insane, right? Mm -hmm. that That's something that you have to give credit where it's due, not just to Suge, but to everybody, the label, the... The, the attorneys, yeah. the artists, the producers, whatever. But then the second part to me was t tenfold because of the back end. And that's something we also talked about. Go check out that interview with the dog, with the dog pound on Homegrown. But the back end is, is a lot of important stuff in there because Daz produced a lot of them records. Yeah. And by Snoop buying that catalog, Snoop can, can, can now go back in and allocate proper percentages to certain wow. people. You know what I mean? We talked about that. Like um, on the when we had Daz on the show solo, he talked about how <laughs> He told Suge and he told Jay he wanted his money because they sampled him and they, he never got his he never got credit and you don't he never even got, need to clear it with him and then he never got paid but they didn't technically have to go through that parameters so now that it's all in their control of Snoop yeah. Snoop is able to properly allocate things and the reason why I spoke to, to Snoop's temperament as far as him pushing his positivity is he wants to give everybody their just due their credit yeah. oh you were you were a co-writer on this album let me put you in the credit so that way you document it as a co-writer on this record that went two times platinum. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Because the business was never done right. The business was never done correctly, yeah, according to correctly. them. Right. Yeah, I just I just love we're in an era now where, I mean, also, you, you got to think just for Snoop himself, it's like, you get to claim your legacy, right? You get to control the narrative, get control and that, take control and ownership of it. Like, we think, we're always going to think of Snoop Dogg when we think Death Row Records, right? So, yeah. I mean, I just also like the era that we're now. We, we come from the era where it's like, artists couldn't get, be treated fairly and couldn't get, their masters. Now people get these accolades or get these masters and own their catalog. It's not rare anymore. It's almost like you should be empowered like that. You know, Kendrick signing himself to Interscope at this point, you know, the empowering of that. So I'm all for it. What'd you think? I thought it was amazing to just see somebody take that leap because obviously Snoop has a million other things that he's doing a all million. the time. So the fact that he's even, even hearing him speak here seems like he's actually invested not only the money, but the time into making sure it goes right and everybody gets their just due. I, th I thought it was dope. And I don't want to speak out of term, but it's a lot coming from Death Row Records. You're well, I was going to say, are we gonna, are we gonna, I mean, it's all respect to get the OGs together, but are we going to get, what's the new generation of Death Row Records look like? Are there younger artists on the horizon? What, if I'm 20 years old, what am I doing? Shout out, I know she was working with, with Death Row for a bit. Kyra, is she still? Stay you, tuned, man. You know, Tyra's super talented. I don't either way, West but yeah, lots, hey. Stay tuned, man. Uncle Snoop got some shit over there. And that's with little Larry Jackson too, right? Gamma, or no? Stay tuned. Okay, we'll see. Stay tuned. West Coast. Um, far from the West Coast. This is another anniversary <coughs> that just came up. So Tyler, the Creator's UK band. Uh, it's the five-year anniversary of it being lifted. But I thought that that was not only one of the craziest things to ever happen in hip-hop, where he was legitimately banned from another country. I know it's happened, you know, a couple times here and there. But I, I wanted to just give Tyler his flowers, but also get your guys' opinion on where he stands kind of in this next generation. He's not really an OG. He's not really in the middle child yeah, class. Yeah. He's kind of right after them, but he's also grown to be one of the biggest artists in, in the game, where does Tyler have a place in this next generation of, of hip hop? I think he's a leader, but he does it his own way. I remember we had him on the Rap Radar podcast. I tried to coax him into big free talk. Yeah. Like, Tell these motherfuckers you better than all of them. Like, but I think he just, he, he wants to have his own lane. And he clearly doesn't try to like fit in. You can't get, I've tried to literally try to like that sort of competitiveness in him and talk shit to him. 
He know he knows he's the shit, but he doesn't. He does. He wants to keep his own lane and not be measured against other artists per se. But I do think we have to look at him as like one of our leaders. I mean, yeah. again, he's definitely one of the leaders. He's definitely one of the leaders. And I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I don't even know I've said this publicly, but like we didn't embrace Tyler. Yeah, you West know from Coast, right? from yeah. from a from a from a LA. I don't want to say from the streets, but. A lot of my lens come from that vantage point, right? Yep. We didn't embrace Tyler coming up, and we always looked at him like, "Oh, he's the weird guy. Yeah, he's the it. he's a, he's more an outcast type of person, right?" And you know, I've actually um, said this to him on the air, like you know, apologizing to him as far as him not being welcomed and embraced in the new wave of shit that was happening in the LA hip hop scene. Because yep. our future had their own thing going on, yep. like it was like. But then to be like, and then. To, to counter that, though, where we are from, me and my people, like, we're from the east side. Like I explained this last time. Like, they're from the west side. Like, we didn't even go over there because yeah. it was just a whole other world over there. Like, not not from a weird standpoint, but when you're in L.A. and you got to ride a bus through – I got to ride through 13 different hoods to get over there to Fairfax. Like, I'm not I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. And we don't have cars. So it's kind of – and L.A. so spread out. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's just geographically and, and climate. So they took advantage of the Internet. Mm -hmm. Because we came up doing hard sale, hard physicals and out the trunk, bootleg, DJ drama style type yep. shit, right? Whereas they utilize the internet. Them, uh, Our Future, TDE, uh, Dom Kennedy, Casey Veggies, like that whole wave. Absolutely. Pac Div, you and I, like all them, they utilize the internet to their advantage and it worked out for them. They bet heavily on that, that wave and the blog era carried them into a net, into the what we call the digital age, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So with Tyler specifically, I always avoided him because I just was ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Much to like the industry which would, would, would treat him when he first came in with the fucking video with, yeah. I forgot the name and of it. And to be fair, he yeah. tried to be, he played the anti-hero role. He, he played yeah, it. Yeah. He played you know? that role, but to yeah. me, being close-minded, that's not something we played with in my in my household. Like I never played with sacrilegious uh, images or that's just not what we pl we don't play yeah. with that type of shit mm -hmm. so to me when he first came out i was immediately turned off and never gave him a shot right this is all the way up until like when they started moving as a unit like frank ocean came in and there was this whole like and then you had sweatshirt like a bunch of different people mm -hmm. who came in that wave where it's like oh they're they're actually talking about something and they have something to offer musically is when i gave it a shot right and i know i speak for a really large set of people especially from L.A., who we didn't embrace him. So to your point, when you're like, yo, people didn't give him that credit and people didn't really look at him like that, they didn't initially. And that he has every right to pop his shit yeah. and feel how he wants because he did it his way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that. And then um, the second the second to your point, I mean, second point to what you were saying, Jay, as far as Tyler being, Tyler is a leader, right? Because he represents a certain people who don't represent the same other people, I mean, same set of people that other people represent, right? So Tyler is a leader in that way, but I think the way he goes about composing his music, no one's fucking with him on yeah, that level. Yeah, like, absolutely. no one was thinking, let me go get DJ Drama and, and, and do an album. You know what I mean? Outside of drama, he had, he, always, he always wanted to do his his album, but nobody was doing that. Yeah. And now, like, it kind of reinvigorated yeah. the drama shit. And then when it comes to even the way he does his shows, like... <laughs> Like his shows are crazy. Yeah. He's like his Coachella set, insane. Mm -hmm. yeah. insane. Popping out. Nobody's doing the stuff that Tyler's doing, so I want to give him his credit. Also, put a lot of people on. You know, like Fact. Built, built a whole movement. You know, we don't get the yeah. Frank Oceans, we don't get all this people. And to be like the leader and also become the star. You know, people thought it was gonna be your old sweatshirt or free Frank Ocean. Like he ended up being the bigger star of that whole movement that he created. Yeah, right? and it's interesting too because we talked you know, earlier about people wanting acceptance from hip-hop culture or the mainstream culture i think tyler did want that approval but the way he got he went about getting it wasn't overly obsessing over it he just went and made great music he went and elevated his craft he went and made a better album and a better album and a better album and did his sonics and his production the way he wanted to do even with the drama thing like he was like oh i want to be the best rapper out okay i'll give you a full uh, full-on rap album and i'll go get dj drama and i'll go get wayne and make him rap and like I'm not talking about it. I'm just going to do it. And I think. Do you did. think that he still gets the credit he gets if he does placate the mainstream game? Because I think Tyler gets a lot of credit for. I think he gets a not. He gets an extra scoop. I call it some Mexican shit, but he. <laughs> it's like I'm a fat person, but he gets an extra scoop of guac because he's doing it his way. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like yeah. the same thing with Kendrick or TDE. Like they look at them like, oh, you're doing it your way and it's working. 
yeah. as opposed to doing it the Drake way or any other kind of way. Yeah, I think he gets some extra points there because right. everything he's done is so against the grain. Correct. Like putting on Eagle the blonde or, wig. Yeah, Eagle like. Was yeah, so he, you know, for sure, extra guac for, for Tyler. Shout out to Tyler. Uh, yeah. You mentioned uh, TDE. Yeah. Uh, there was a, a tweet that Chuck D put out where he said he still wants a black hippie album. <laughs> uh, for <laughs> I'll ask two separate questions because I know you won't say anything about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, on a debate uh, show. Yeah, on a, yeah. So the, the, bigger the, picture. The, the real bigger picture is what albums – that we never got, would you guys still want to hear? Whether they were Today? like, yeah, whether they were like bubbling in that time period and they talked about doing an album together, or maybe there was a few songs that came out together, but they ne we never got the full project. I'd be tar and feathered if I said a black hippie album, so I'm not going. I'm gonna refrain from comment on that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you said tar and feathered, yeah. Traitor. <laughs> um, ooh, Do I have one. What, what, what oh, yeah, I'm trying to think. I used this to hate when people, when they do the album and like, I remember back in the day, Brand New being like, they always kind of do it after their peak. That's what I always. So, so you talking about the Freddie versus I, Jason album? Huh? You talking about the Freddie and Jason album? Oh, that, yeah, that could be one too, Jada and Fab. But like, I feel like a lot of times what happens is it had to be that timing and it's almost, if it didn't happen that yeah. timing, I almost don't want it because I don't expect the quality to be what it would have been when you have the ideal moment of that's when you Yeah, you'd have it. to, what if you could have gotten it from that time period? Like when they were cooking, like oh. like Kendrick and Cole while they were in the mode, you know. Obviously, that'd be great. I don't know if oh. it's different we're though get because it now you think about how the people like. I mean, I still come to the era where you had to go to the record label to get the music and stuff, right? But yeah. now it's like you could just get your shit out digitally yeah, to the yeah, world. Yeah. So I think a lot more spontaneous stuff would have happened if if we were in a dis different type of era back then, you know. And they might not have taken it as seriously. Like when Drake and Future did What a Time, they did it in six days and put it out. I think maybe we would have gotten more of that if. I'm going to get killed for this. Okay. Protect <laughs> head. Protect head. I want to see, I want to see the Russ and Blast album. Ooh, Russ and Blast. Were they in, were they cooking to that I, degree? I don't know. I'm just saying. That's why you. <laughs> I love, without getting, I loved the single that they put out. I thought that they I want to see the Russ other. and Blast album ASAP. I think that would do very well. Yeah. Yeah. On all. Russ and Blast. That's Russ what I want to see. Russ and Blast. I think Russ is a top tier phenomenal artist. And I think Blast is amazing. And I think that that album would do really, really well. That's some melodies. Yeah. It should be. Songs. Not with the hip hop purists want to hear, but it is what it is. <laughs> well, listen, I think. We've gone into a lot of topics today. Ooh, we could, exhausted, we could, we? Yeah, we can keep home, talking. <laughs> uh, all right, well, the bigger picture, going into the next six months of the year, what is something you'd like to see from hip-hop? I want no more beef records right now. because <laughs> I don't want people trying to jump in with the beef shit. It's just it's corny to me. It's like, keep, it's, it's, leave, leave that alone. That's the only thing I don't want to see. No more I want, I don't want to He said, what do you want to see? Not what you don't want to see. I just want, I want, look, I, I, I'm saying again on the record, this is going to be one of those all-time best years of hip-hop. Okay. So I just want, I want a Drake okay. album, I want a Kendrick album, I want people to inspire each other to keep making great music. Like, I feel like this has been an exciting year already with this great battle. Yeah. And so much, some music already I've enjoyed, more is coming. So, yeah, I just don't want no whack-ass battle records and beef records. Jay? So. I would like... Obviously, I'm looking forward to Kendrick's album. I would like to hear whatever Cole's reflection record is about this whole scenario. I imagine like a Let Nas Down type vibe on the fall off where he's talking about like, let Nas he, down it's his conscious vibe. going back and forth of do I enter the beef? That's, fun, that's hilarious. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, down. yeah, I let myself down. Oh, when I, A self-loathe record. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've probably given up, but I, I still would like to convince uh, my friend, Mr. Sean Jay-Z Carter to make some type of album. That would be nice. That would be nice. I want to see, um, I want to see I want to see this Roddy record come. I want to see this K Dot record come, and I would love, I would love to get um, a lot of the newer artists like looks with the OGs. Mm. You know what I mean? Those like type of collaboration. Yeah, I want to see some more of those collabs. Like I want to see, I want to see you know, um, not even it don't even gotta be OGs. Like it don't gotta be Snoop or E Forty. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be G Easy with 
you know, somebody that's younger on, on the come up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he did with Cardi B with No Limit. Mm-hmm. Cardi wasn't global when she That when was she a big went, record, but people forget yeah. that was a big that record. Was, that and went still one the, And went number one in the country. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, top five on the Billboard Hot 100. But I'm just saying, like, stuff like that. Um, I want to see – I, I kind of miss – you know who I miss outside? Ferg. Yeah, yeah, me too. We could use a summer of Ferg. ASAP. Joint. We could use an ASAP mob I, I said Ferg. Okay. 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 Nice I, 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 I said Rock first. I don't. I don't want to hear no more vibes. And people. Get, I don't want to hear no more vibes, bro. Give me get, bops all summer. I'm outside all you, summer. I want Ferg all summer. We want to be turned up all summer. You want do a lot. I want. No, nah, I want plain Jane. I want all that. I want turned up all summer long. I, love that. I don't I want, want to hear no I vibes Rocky, until I want November. Rocky to deliver an album of his full potential. I would love that too. No vibes till November. That's what I want. No, no I want slappers, blappers, blammers, and bops hey, until don't November. Sleep on, Rocky can, uh, what's that, uh, praise the Lord? That's a, that's a I said Ferg. I know, but I'm just telling you, Rocky can Rocky? make a banger. What about Rocky? I, I like, I, I'm, I'm not counting Rocky out, but Rocky is, he's style and he rich as fuck. He is. You know what I'm saying? He don't, like, I, yeah, I need yeah, some yeah. struggle in yeah, my music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Go find some struggle and make another album. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we're excited to hear all that. Yes, another yes. episode of The Big Picture. If you're commenting, let us know what you want us to talk about next time, and we'll read your comments. Yeah, Bigger Picture. West Coast. Peace.